Food brings us together, but in the diverse culinary landscape of the United States, certain ingredients remain forbidden fare. Some foods raise legal, ethical, or safety concerns that prohibit them from American plates. Join us as we show you 20 foods you are not allowed to eat in the United States. Number 20. Authentic Cadbury Bars We all have heard of the War of the Currents, Console Wars, and even Cola Wars. But what about Chocolate Wars? Turns out there has been bitter battling in America's sweet sphere ever since Hershey's won a landmark lawsuit, granting them exclusive candy bar making and import rights that left a sour taste for loyal lovers of British chocolate. This transatlantic trade tussle tremored when America's chocolate Goliath, Hershey's, sued New Jersey-based British food importer Let's Buy British for trafficking authentic Cadbury bars across the pond from England. Despite differences like real UK Cadbury touting higher fat content and no preservatives compared to Hershey's sugar-first additive-laced American Cadbury doppelgangers, the chocolate giant succeeded in blocking the imports, forcing the smaller shop to cease chocolate operations in 2015. Effectively conquering the rivalry threatening their recipe, remakes by strong-arming any trafficking of bona fide British bars, critics cried cronyism, given Hershey's penchant for producing their U.S. distributed products abroad while hoarding import permissions at home. The scandal even swept other UK candies like Yorkies, Rolos, and Toffee Crisps into crossfire contention over branding and packaging, despite glaring differences in appearances. While American Cadbury egg hunts continue annually with slightly altered tastes, thousands of former UK chocolate fans signed petitions protesting Hershey's iron grip, limiting access to their discontinued favorites barred from crossing the Atlantic. So, despite many attempts, no one has yet managed to checkmate Hershey's as the undisputed emperor ruling America's Coco Kingdom through coercion rather than consumer choice. So if you want to buy authentic Cadbury in U.S., you can't. Number 19. Forbidden Blood Puddings The vicious vocabulary of blood pork cakes and puddings fills foreigners with phantom visions of gory eras when meats were rude and diets crude. Why else would modern menus feature fresh baked goods boasting blood as feature ingredient? Surely civilized societies evolved past such primal cuisine. But travel to Taiwan reveals a vibrant food culture still embracing pork blood combined with sweet jasmine rice, then wrapped in basil leaves for vibrant boxed snacks sold from bustling night market stalls. However, efforts to sample this island specialty stateside only deliver dead ends. Unlike Chinese cousins crowded with steamed or stir-fried pig blood curds, USDA codes outlaw the whimsical blood cakes of Taiwan. Their phaser comes from contrast, the creamy crimson interior offering less cringe than curiosity-inducing texture for the intrepid nibbler. Ingredients pose few health hazards given proper storage and preparation eliminate bacterial risks that primarily gave blood broth a bad name. Still, Squeamish associations stall the wider introduction of porcine plasma puddings, which remain obscure foreign oddities on Western tables. At best, they endure as outpost indulgences for Chinatown foodies, seeking imported Eastern Eats banned for mainstream American appetites not yet awakened to blood's baking potential. Number 18. Kinder Egg Surprise What's a candy-loving kid not allowed to eat in America? Surprisingly, the delectable Kinder Surprise chocolate egg is concealed around a capsule cradling a fun toy inside. Biting into that crunchy shell to retrieve a random trinket makes for captivating treats and choking hazards the FDA won't sanction. As the agency safeguarding what foods businesses can sell to U.S. citizens, they've banned Kinder eggs since the 1970s for posing danger to small children. It seems excessively cautious given no rash of child casualties. Yet their reasoning highlights real risks, that encased non-food items aren't appropriate candy ingredients where accidentally swallowing whole poses safety issues, particularly for younger kids. Hence, the FDA uses federal confectionery laws on embedding objects to keep foreign kinder surprise eggs off American store shelves, much to the dismay of tender-aged sweet tooths. Ironically, the threat is a niche to the egg's unique merging of candy and toy. Standalone chocolate and capsule plastic wouldn't cause concern when swallowed separately, 
Just paired within tiny eggshells, they become forbidden contraband candies only smugglers can provide for illegal backyard trades between pouting children resigned to boring chocolate bunnies each Easter. It's a limiting law leaving lasting impressions on youth about certain foreign delights being off-limits on American soil. Number 17. Unpasteurized Milk Got milk? Not the raw, farm-fresh kind, at least for interstate commerce. Federal rules insist on pasteurization to kick out unwelcome guests like Listeria, Salmonella, and E. coli. So, before our milk goes on a nationwide adventure, it's got to go through the germ-fighting process. The FDA's strict stance stems from studying the dangers lurking in untreated milk, arguing that while pasteurization employs brief heating to neutralize infectious microbes, nutritional values remain largely intact. Raw dairy supporters counter that killing all bacteria also eliminates potentially beneficial strains found naturally. Despite federal restrictions, a patchwork of contradictory state laws muddles the raw milk debate, with retail or farm sales allowed to varying degrees across roughly 30 states, banned in seven with intrastate avenues fuzzy in the remainder. Passions run high between raw fans convinced pasteurizing robs pristine farm freshness and officials citing public health protection against the hazards from contaminated dairies. One side offers anecdotal evidence of raw milk's proposed probiotic virtues. The other produces reams of data-tracking disease outbreaks linked to unpasteurized dairy. Absent consensus, both aggressive arguments claiming ethical high ground or consumer rights intensify, ignoring middle ground compromises. Number 16. Kasu Marzu from pungent blues to nutty gruyeres, lovers of dairy delight in discovering distinctive cheeses from around the globe. Each offers unique aromas, textures, and flavors, signatures of regional culture woven into coagulated curds. But one variety pushes extremes to the point of shock and awe, as well as legal prohibition in the United States. Behold Kazumarzu, a traditional sheep's milk creation hailing from Italy's rugged island of Sardinia. Home to shaggy-haired pecora goats and winding mountain roads, this region boasts foods as fierce as its landscapes, and nothing showcases Sardinia's rugged, rule-breaking approach to eating like Kasu Marzu. Translating to rotten cheese in Sardinian, Kasu Marzu earns its label honestly thanks to extra fermentation guests, wriggling cheese fly larvae deliberately cultivated inside the aging wheels. These tiny, see-through maggots squirm through the gooey interior, breaking proteins down further to soften the paste while intensifying salty, tangy flavors. Locals swear kasu marzu cannot fully ripen without this additional kick of larval digestive juices to transform it into an elite delicacy. And traditionalists insist kasu marzu isn't ready until thickly rife with worms actively churning the dairy. They scoop out glistening, maggot-studded pastes onto flatbreads, letting excess larvae leap away. The key is chewing fast enough to consume worms whole before they bore through lips or gums. Foreigners balk, while Sardinians claim squirming textures punctuate perfection with these extra wriggly, umami-rich bites. But lax Italian regulations meet strict opposition overseas. The FDA forbids the sale or import, citing risks like intestinal larval infections from accidentally biting into live maggots. So stateside cheese fiends must content themselves with solid, wormless varieties or embark on a taboo taste adventure to Sardinia if daring to try the world's most dangerous cheese. Number 15. Pufferfish Toxins Skilled sushi chefs in Japan spend years honing the hazardous craft of preparing fugu, learned under strict apprenticeship so they may qualify to serve pufferfish. Elsewhere, feasting on this marine delicacy remains fringe fare, freighted with a daunting reputation thanks to the lethal toxins permeating pufferfish bodies. Just a pinprick of poison picked up prepping their meat can paralyze muscles, halting breathing to slowly suffocate diners. Hence, many nations heavily restrict or fully outlaw selling or serving dangerously deadly fugu. Only uniquely specialized chefs can obtain fugu preparation licenses by passing Japan's rigorously challenging exam. This intensive process underscores the sobering truth about pufferfish cuisine. While deemed an exquisite, expensive treat among thrill-seeking gourmands, fugu harbors the potential for tragic repercussions if mishandled, becoming a meal that kills. Hence, the unique thrill of dining on a dish flirting with mortality 
has also made fugu controversial and legally prohibited in countries like the USA wanting to eliminate such risks. Here, only a few licensed suppliers can provide select fugu species to restaurants. And even then, fish must arrive with toxins painstakingly removed beforehand. Compare that to Japan, where daring diners may request certain fugu parts be left purposefully intact, so traces of numbing poisons tingle cautiously on the tongue. Proof of the chef's precision in keeping servings non-lethal. Such exacting but electrifying performances are forbidden under America's strictly safety-first statutes. Those seeking authentic, full-bodied fugu thrills must journey to Japan, with no compromises on the proper hair-raising experience allowed stateside. Number 14. The Forbidden Aki Fruit Journeying nearly 5,000 miles from the lush rainforests of West Africa to the vibrant Caribbean backdrop of Jamaica, the aki fruit has woven itself into the very fabric of Jamaican cuisine and culture. Yet what is a crucial ingredient in national dishes like the world-renowned aki and saltfish finds itself forbidden and restricted in the United States? This peculiar fruit, bursting open to reveal its soft yellow flesh and inedible black seeds, packs a secret, hidden toxins that can bring on severe illness and even death if consumed before fully ripe. While Jamaicans have honed preparation techniques over generations of ackee consumption, improper cooking still poses dangers. These risks have led ackee to be heavily regulated in the U.S., only allowed in canned or frozen forms that have been rigorously inspected. It's a stark contrast for a fruit so deeply intertwined with Jamaica's identity. Beloved for its rich, nutty flavor and versatile texture, Aki arrived in Jamaica back in the 18th century, traveling the same cruel slave trade routes as the African people who would embrace it. Over centuries, it became ingrained in cuisine and culture. The Aki tree takes root across the island's lush central and western regions, and fruit ripens during Jamaica's summer months, adding bright pops of red and yellow before splitting open when mature. Inside lies the coveted arrows, named for their scrambled egg-like appearance and texture when cooked. Expertly paired with salted codfish, these buttery, mild arrows form the basis of Jamaica's unofficial national dish. Beyond the plate, Aki even features in linguistic and artistic traditions, immortalized through folk songs and poetry. Yet behind Aki's central role, dangers linger. Two toxins, Hypoglycin A and Hypoglycin B concentrate in unripe or inedible ackee parts. Consuming these without proper preparation can trigger severe hypoglycemia and Jamaican vomiting sickness. Though JVS incidence has fallen as methods improved, ackee's risks have led the FDA to enforce restrictions. Today, the only legal ackee imports are rigorously inspected canned or frozen products, heavily taxing supplies. Number 13. Sassafras with its mitten-shaped leaves filtering dappled sunlight in forests across eastern America, the sassafras tree holds a central place in the nation's history and tradition. Valued by indigenous tribes for their aromatic bark and roots, sassafras made their way into home remedies and tonics for generations. But one key component turned opinion against this once-celebrated tree, a compound called saffrol that studies deemed a potential carcinogen, forcing sweeping bans of sassafras products in the 1960s. The FDA's strictures reached even beloved root beer, which once relied on sassafras's distinctive flavor. With its notes of cinnamon, licorice, and wintergreen, sassafras oil has been integral to the classic beverage since root beer's 19th century origins. Suddenly, this staple ingredient was too hazardous for human consumption. As research mounted warnings of liver damage and cancer risks associated with saffron, Root beer makers raced to alter formulas and remove sassafras entirely. A whole industry faced upheaval over decades of increasing concern towards this once-trusted tree. Sassafras had long held a place in Native American medicinal tradition, applied to treat fevers and rheumatism. European colonists quickly followed suit, brewing teas from its bark and roots believed to purify blood and strengthen bodies. This legacy became tainted once science cast doubts a fallen icon of early American folk medicine. The once ubiquitous sassafras now faded from grocery shelves across the nation. As related plants like anise, fennel, and licorice continued flavoring foods, sassafras faced erasure, remembered only in the name it bestowed upon old-fashioned root beer recipes. 
Yet the FDA's clampdown on commercial sassafras hasn't eliminated it from enthusiasts eager to revive traditional beverages. At least for now, it persists in niche artisanal brews, an echo of bygone tastes. Number 12. Horse meat. Few meals spark outrage like the notion of feasting on horse meat, shunned as taboo fare in America where horses are singled out as companions and partners in work, war, and sport not fodder for the dinner plate. Yet cultures overseas, even other English-speaking nations like Canada and the UK, find dining on equine no more objectionable than sheep or cows. How did views diverge so drastically? And why does U.S. law ban the sale and slaughter of America's iconic horses? Credit Western mythology's glorification, from gallant steeds in medieval tales to the cowboy's rugged Mustang epitomizing frontier grit. Such potent symbols shaped American psyches to see horses as kindred creatures deserving protection, not protein sources for people's plates. Horrified reactions against hypophagy horse meat consumption stemmed from sentiments more cultural than logical. After all, horses are large livestock equally fitting for sustenance as cattle or pigs. Practicality trumped taboos when wartime deprivation or economic crises pressured the U.S. into temporarily lifting its guard against horse meat, allowing needy citizens access to meat, alternates as beef grew scarce. Yet disgust persisted, regulations tightened, and when prosperity returned, horses largely fled American menus once more. Today, three states have outright bans, while others heavily restrict any sale, processing, and slaughter intended for human fare. Yet curious case carve-outs endure. Why does Florida permit horses killed in accidents to be harvested, while Oklahoma and Texas allow those unfit for work to become meat? Logical, perhaps, but half-measures hinting that America's rejection of eating horses isn't completely clear-cut. And naysayers should note that movies, books, and familiarity guiding perceptions of horses as companions, not cuisine, stem more from cultural nurture than human nature. Number 11. Chitterling. In kitchens across America's southern states, cooks immerse themselves in lengthy rituals of rinsing, scrubbing, and deveining, not succulent shrimp, but rather the humble chitterling, better known as pig intestines. Despite extensive cleaning, these coiled tubes of porcine digestive tract remain taboo morsels banned if suspected of harboring bacteria. Yet legions of aficionados still salivate for the rich, faintly funky flavors chitterling stews deliver, especially during holidays when they grace celebratory soul food spreads. Chitterling connoisseurs claim proper preparation eliminates risks from bacteria dwelling in intestinal nooks. But health regulations disagree noting slaughtering processes that often rupture intestines, spilling fecal contamination into crevices scrubbing simply can't reach. Hence, authorities outlaw selling chitterlings uncleaned, while custom dictates desperate measures before consuming. Methods include near-forensic inspection, splaying tubes inside out, then relentlessly combing inner ridges before hour-long soaks in vinegar or lime juice. Such meticulous efforts do neutralize perilous microbes, but not all cooks exercise equal diligence, prompting warnings against chitterling consumption amidst ongoing safety versus tradition debates. Nevertheless, legions in Dixie's small towns defiantly cling to generational rituals, often learning gut-cleaning skills before even reading age. As church halls echo with gossip, and kitchens swell with giggles, tears, and memories, well-worn hands repeat the toilsome tactility of chitterling preparation bonding families across decades. The final simmered dishes ain't for outsiders, but those who inherit this identity. Number 10. Caviar Once supplying the majority of the world's caviar, the magnificent Caspian beluga sturgeon has suffered such relentless overfishing that its very existence teeters on the brink, Coveted beluga caviar with its distinguished flavor and exorbitant price tags has fueled rampant poaching that may deal a death blow to wild populations. In response, the United States banned import in 2005 to quell demand and deter illegal trade devastating the beluga sturgeon fishery. Sadly, the king of caviars may now itself be destined for collapse into obscurity. For millennia, beluga sturgeons thrived in the Caspian Sea maturing over decades to bear the next generation of caviar. But in just a few decades of industrialized 20th century fishing, 
the species numbers crashed. By 2004, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service listed belugas as critically endangered, banning import and sale to American markets. While intended to take pressure off wild stocks, the harsh reality is illegal activity persists as long as the beluga's precious eggs command sky-high black market prices, sometimes over $100 an ounce. The vicious cycle continues. Scarcity heightens demand, driving illegal activity. Pushed to the verge of extinction, the fate of the beluga now relies on prompt and sweeping intervention. Number 9. 4. Loco. Once a leader in Bacchanalian brew experiments, the indie startup Fusion Projects pushed boundaries too far for the Fed's comfort with Four Loco, their bubbly booze and caffeine cocktail that grew notorious on college campuses for blackout drinking. This brash beverage was a guaranteed good time until the lights went out and good times gave way to ER trips or worse, propelling the FDA to ban them from sale. At the center of the backlash brewing around Four Loco, was a fierce stimulant sedative combo that blurred the perception of inebriation despite continually downing alcohol's depressant effects. Chugging these sweet malt liquors easily masked growing drunkenness given the caffeine and taurine energizers keeping drinkers from passing out naturally after excessive intoxication. Yet the blackout in a can public image earned by 2010 spelled impending market doom via FDA sanctions, citing Four Loco as adulterated products unfit for consumption. Once legal threats killed the caffeine kick, sales crashed hard. But worries remain whether copycats and alcoholic energy drink cousins might still lurk with similarly concerning chemistries. Number 8. The Forbidden Bean Belying the unassuming appearance of shriveled, raisin-esque pods lies the forbidden tonka bean, wafting an enchanting aroma so potent and pleasing that its enticing extract was dubbed the food of the gods. Yet heavenly hypnotic scents slumber chemical components that deem this seemingly benign legume contraband cuisine in America. Hence, the alluring tonka bean languishes under bands barring bites of its preternaturally scrumptious essence. This South American forest treasure enraptures with its mind-bending fragrance, redolent of vanilla, honeyed almond, dried cherries, and whiffs of newly mown meadows. But the very richness infusing Tonka ostentatious orchid bouquet also begets bitter legal blowback. Safety limits on coumarin, Tonka key flavor compound making up 1% of the bean. Deemed toxic beyond modest intake, the FDA outlawed coumarin as a food additive back in 1954. While only huge, unrealistic Tonka consumption risks health issues, trace wafts from mere shavings easily overwhelm dishes with uncanny addictiveness. Thus, aroma alchemy, granting the bean's bewitching powers, also relegated its contraband status for the world's top chefs, daring to push culinary boundaries by covertly incorporating this high-roller ingredient of the outlawed elite. Number 7. Chilean Sea Base From the frigid, tempestuous waters swirling Antarctica arises the curiously named Chilean Sea Bass. These snowy-fleshed fish swim far beyond Chilean shores across vast southern ocean reaches. But an alternate moniker, Patagonian toothfish, failed to entice much appetite compared to the marketable Chilean branding. Sadly, excesses driven by the sea bass' sudden prestige push this unique species towards perilous decline. Its troubles emerged on high seas plied by long-line fishing vessels, aggressively hauling up respectable catches until the late 1970s brought radical reversal. Stocks started plummeting while global demand surged, an imbalance starving recruitment essential for sustainability. By the turn of the new millennium, chilly sea bass landed endangered labels as extreme overfishing pushed populations to the verge of collapse. In response, trade restrictions aimed at protecting the profoundly pressured fish. The U.S. now solely allows licensed boats using sanctioned techniques to specifically target and report toothfish, enacting import rules that reject illegally caught southern stocks. It has helped stabilize but not solved issues, proving that preserving biodiversity depends on conscientious consumer choices as much as conservation policies. Because alone, neither restaurants nor regulators wield enough power to combat cravings threatening delicate species. Number 6. Shark Fins Few Chinese banquet treats convey as much culinary cash as shark fin soup, 
delivering elaborate essence of the exotic ocean in every spoonful, at least symbolically. The actual fins themselves leak little flavor sand stock and supplemental seasonings. Their popularity pivots on privileged perceptions, valuing rarefied ingredients more for opulent imagery than taste. Hence, Cruelty ticks on even after these texturally tantalizing triangular fins are hacked from still-living sharks. Merciless harvesting processes drive declines as fishermen slice off fins and then dump mutilated sharks back into the sea doomed to sink towards suffocating deaths. Such inhumane practices stoke outcries against the lavish dish, resulting in finning bands aiming to protect vulnerable predators from these vicious human attacks. Of course, Cultural attachments die hard, with long-standing traditions that treasure exotic eats and pricey planner cartilaginous tissues for displaying wealth, status, and generosity when treating guests. But as more chefs develop alternate versions ditching genuine fins, conservation voices finally gain enough volume to shift attitudes against this once ultimate dining extravagance. Gradually, mentalities mature. Recognizing even gourmet pursuits fail to justify propagating pain, suffering, and ecosystem disruption. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Scotland's iconic dish haggis holds an unfortunate distinction in America, banned as contraband cuisine due to USDA regulations prohibiting feeding lung tissue to humans. This savory oatmeal pudding ensconcing the finely minced heart, lungs, and liver of sheep came under fire as ingredients not approved for legal sale. So the haggis ban means no full Scottish dining experience can occur authentically stateside without smuggled imports of the infamous stuffed sheep stomach. The rich, crumbly meat paste is considered Scotland's national dish, though its production method runs afoul food safety rules regarding certain animal organ meats. America's squeamish stance against lungs in food keeps beloved haggis an outsider dish dogged by exile. Have you ever eaten something that's banned where you live? Let us know in the comments below if you've managed to taste illegal delicacies like haggis or other forbidden international eats barred from crossing U.S. borders. Number 5. Bushmeat Venturing into Africa's forests and grasslands reveals a bounty of wild game roaming in vivid profusion. Antelope bounding, monkeys chattering, bats fluttering through sun-dappled canopies. Some communities harvest local meat and consider bush fare fine dining. But foreign handlers risk mishandling raw game. So bushmeat import confronts automatic U.S. ban to safeguard against disease. These sweeping restrictions acknowledge meats from wild African animals could introduce pathogens quite problematic for human health. Bacteria risks already raw meat chancy, but bush fare crawls with added microscopic nasties one wouldn't find in everyday American proteins. Take Ebola, the horrific viral villain behind recurrent Central African outbreaks also linked to bat or ape bushmeat, believed to initially transfer infection. HIV first infected humans after simian immunodeficiency viruses in the African primate bush game triggered the global AIDS pandemic. So while antelope drumsticks or barbecued baboons present no direct dangers, Bushmeat handlers can't guarantee meat like bat guano contaminated carcasses didn't mingle aminals during dubious processing conditions typical of poaching, where facilities lack proper protective protocols. Hence, to reduce Ebola, rabies, or worse, slipping into the food chain off illegally trafficked contraband, harsh penalties were pursued to dissuade imports, keeping dubious delicacies out of American domains. Number 4. The Redfish once teeming trophy catches along southern shores, the vivid vermilion-hued redfish swims as Louisiana's state saltwater fish, honoring its vibrant beauty and epic flavor equally beloved fried, blackened, or simmered into rich stews. Dubbed red drum or channel bass elsewhere for the throaty calls mature males boom underwater, the coppery fish once filled coastal nets and larders before one chef's culinary spotlight trained an unfortunate spotlight. When Paul Prudhomme's blackened redfish recipe went viral in the 1980s and commercial fisheries answered demand, this Gulf of Mexico icon rapidly plunged towards ruin. Stocks crashed in just three years as industrialization followed a fad-fueled appetite for redfish fillets. By 1986, federal protections were forcibly imposed, banning all redfish harvest and closing fisheries until populations rebounded. Today, bans linger in federal waters off every state except Mississippi, 
Yet worrying signs still haunt recovery hopes given the damage wrought in the brief window between obscurity and overfishing-driven endangerment. Habitat loss from floods, storms, and spills further hamper resilience. So while Cajuns continue catching minimal personal catches, unfettered feasts on this once commercial crown jewel remain confined to history. Number 3. Bird's Nests Prized as one of Chinese cuisine's most coveted delicacies, the exotic edible bird's nest chronicles an unusual gastronomic tale. These strange nests providing the basis for sweetened bowls of what resembles delicate vermicelli originate from the protective shelters that swiftlets hastily construct along cavernous cliff sides and cave interiors across southern Asian coasts. Swiftlet saliva comprises the gummy binding agent holding their architectural creations together, spun into cup-shaped structures where pears incubate precious eggs. But to humans, these solidified spit creations become a singular soup ingredient during long, simmering brews, coaxing gelatinous textures from what starts hardened and brittle when harvested. Elite Epicureans swear by bird's nests health-enhancing properties and subtle flavor able to elevate cuisine into lofty levels of decadence. Unrelenting demand for nests means disturbing the endangered birds, threatening their fragile populations. So conservation concerns brought legal trade bans in America where only smugglers can supply these unlawfully obtained Epicurean oddities. Number 2. Lazy Cakes In an era where supplements spike sundries from sports drinks to smoking, trust regulation to frown when food makers sneak melatonin into treats without making sleep-inducing ingredients abundantly clear to consumers. Hence, the FDA forced tired tidings upon any companies incorporating the potent hormonal hypnotic into edibles, either amend labels, honestly advertising drowsiness-linked additives, or face federal sanctions on shady formulas judged dangerously misleading. The Sleepy Time snack crackdown specifically stung the lazy cakes. These frosted chocolate squares seemed harmless enough until scrutinizers discovered melatonin comprising up to a third of the recipe, a dosage easily triggering powerful somnolent side effects without most eaters realizing relaxation brownies were secretly spiked with regulated substances. In surrendering to eventual legal cease and desist orders, Lazy Cake conceded to spelling out melatonin contents on shiny new packaging so nobody would again unwittingly munch medicated treats unless intentionally aiming to activate sleep modes with chemical aids legal only when transparently declared. The international imbroglio ultimately awakened food oversight factions to the need for explicit advisories around functional foods, funneling add-ons abetting pharmaceutical effects. Number 1. Royal Swans Soaring elegantly through wetland environs from the balmy bayous of Louisiana to Great Lake regions farther north dwells the stately trumpeter swan, one of America's biggest bird breeds whose name trumpets loudly indeed across misty waters. Centuries back, swans peppered plates for medieval feasts, and quills graced writing plumes, but 19th century hunting overharvested many swan and egret species to the fringe of extinction. Conservationists intervened, enacting fierce protections so trumpeters rebounded after populations sank as low as 400 across two lonely Midwestern refuge sites. Today, these triumphant tundra tribes exceed 40,000, even turning troublesome in areas along the Pacific coast down to Utah and across the northern Midwest, fanning white wingspans measuring up to eight feet. The assertive avians claim ponds and aggressively expand territories, disrupting other species. So wildlife managers suggest lifting protections for swelling swans, surpassing carrying capacities in locales overrun by the big birds. Proposed hunting limits could check overpopulation while supplying sustainably sourced wild game meat for hungry families, given dire economic situations exacerbated by the pandemic. Supporters urge reclassifying swans from federally protected to legal game animals like ducks or geese that conservationists monitor under regulated seasons. If approved, the plan remains contentious. Some call it reasonable population control returning wild game traditions. But dissenter counters this shirk's responsibility foisted on flyway states obligated to safeguard treasured trumpeters without resorting to firearms. The debate rages on. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.